were the years I worked on the, the thermodynamics of computing, that is, the amount of energy required to compute. And then I got involved in uh, quantum information and quantum computing. Uh, what additional things can you do with information when they, you use uh, information carriers that are small enough to uh, uh, obey quantum laws? And this grew into a big field that it included quantum cryptography and now a kind of recasting of the whole theory of information and computing on uh, quantum foundations. I really got interested in it from a uh, college classmate of mine, uh, Stephen Wiesner, who made some of the most fundamental discoveries in this field back in the around uh, early 1970s. He had a paper that didn't get published for 13 years that had the, uh, well, the, it had two in inventions in it, which were, uh, one of them was money that's physically impossible to counterfeit, uh, and the other one was uh, a, a way of sending two messages so that the process of reading one of them spoils the other. Talking to this about, about this Wiesner's discovery, which I was aware of, with Gilles Brassard is what got us to figure out that you could use it for quantum key distribution. I was uh, in Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico, swimming in the ocean. So there I was just swimming and minding my own business when a complete stranger swims up to me and, and tells me that he knows how to use quantum mechanics to make banknotes that would be impossible to kind of fit. Kind of surprising. Um, so I listened to him politely. Um, and by the time we swam back ashore, I had found a way to improve this idea. Um, the, the stranger was Charles Bennett. And, and I had not been his first victim, but somehow I was the first one who paid attention. Uh, he, he, so so in, on that day, he, he told me about the ideas of his friend, Stephen Wiesner. Oh, you probably said I, I swam out to him in the water, and I told him about this Wiesner's work. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what happened. And he, you see, at that point, I was not a, uh, I was a physicist with not much training in computer science. So he brought up all these, these ideas that are well known in computer science, but were in, in cryptography, which he was also familiar with, that I had not been familiar with, like the kind of cut and choose idea where in order to prove that I know something, I produce two things, and, but you have to choose which one I'm going to open up. And if I'm cheating, then, then uh, if I open up the wrong one, I'll get caught out. So formal ways of doing that, and they, they fed into this, uh, into this stuff that we did afterwards. And this, in fact, the first idea was he said, oh, the trouble with this quantum, this, uh, quantum money is that you have to, in order to read it, you have to, to be the bank. You have to know the secret in it. Wouldn't it be nice if you could read it without knowing the secret? And he, and he thought of a way of combining it, the Wiesner quantum money with uh, a public key cryptography that would do that. It was not a completely random occurrence. We, we were both there for a um, symposium, at the, uh, the annual Foundations of Computer Science Symposium, known as FOX, uh, which took place in 79 in Puerto Rico. And he had seen uh, the program, and he knew that I was going to talk about cryptography on the last day. And he had spotted me from my name tag uh, at the opening reception, but waited till we're in the water not wearing my name tag uh, before addressing me. <laughs>